Hello and welcome. It's lovely to have you with us. If you're with us, this message is going to be a little bit different in that there's not a video from this message part, but there is a video from a service that I conducted yesterday, a memorial service of a very, very precious girl that was part of our lives. And that is a girl called Simi. Um, she had been not only dated, but also a very precious friend of Jason, my son. And when I conducted the service and just listening to the family, etc., which should be included in the message, which is going to be sent with this, one of the things was that our general conversation, even around a bride, no matter where it is, when you speak about the Lord, sometimes you have no idea how people are actually needing to hear the things that many of us take for granted. So I've asked Lauren to send the message with the testimonies. There is one in Afrikaans. Um, of the father of Simi um, and she used to come here for brides and then we'd have lovely talks about the spiritual aspects of life and questions and answers and just general discussion and if you know me you'll know I ran a rehab in 2010 and I always said the sessions when people come into a session it's nowhere as effective as when you have a conversation and you're standing around brying a piece of meat and you have a conversation People are in a different mode, a different mood. They don't have a pen and a piece of paper to write things out, but the impact is is actually more profound than just a learning experience. Now, what I want to um, share before we share that message is that it's coming up to Easter. I was in a series on Our Father. That is basically wrapped up. I may share a message after Easter on that. We are going to have Easter messages, um, but I want to just remind you that the way that Easter is, People consider it to be a religious holiday. No, it's not a religious holiday. It's not a religious holy day. It is simply an acknowledgement of the foundation of 365 days of the year, that the death of Christ, the resurrection of Christ, those two things, we cannot afford to go to church on Christmas and go to church on Easter, and the rest of the time it's like, well, we've done our religious thing. Please don't ever think like that. It's the most deadly thing in the world because we relegate God to some religious um, structure instead of the personal and privileged relationship we share with Him personally. So having said that, um, that's going to come up for Easter. The Our Father series that I was doing, I've basically wrapped that up. And the main thing was not to deal with all of the detail, but there is some I'd still like to finish, so we'll do that. And then otherwise... I trust that you will have a wonderful time in reflecting on some of the things in the message I shared, in the testimony, and that you will never underestimate that when God says you are an ambassador of Christ, an ambassador's hometown is never where he is. In other words, heaven is our home. And also there's the aspect of the conversations we have. We don't know what other people or ourselves may face in just a day's time six months time, 10 years time, but sometimes that foundation that we've shared in practical illustrations has always been my style. Sometimes you don't realize how profound it is to see the peace people have found in a tragedy simply because they have acknowledged the eternal grace and purpose of God. More will come from the message that will be shared, but thank you, and I trust that each and every one of you will think about what you do with your faith and how you share it. And if you feel un that you're not confident in it, that is frightful. Don't let that persevere. You cannot afford to do that. And if you feel that there are contradictions, if you feel, that's why we exist. We will dedicate time, energy, email, study material, and to practical questions, because it's often on the easiest things that that we, we confounded. And I'll give you one example as I close, and that is that people say, well, who made God? And my response is very simple. Well, if you were able to explain that, you'd have to be on an equal level of God. So do you think you're likely to know? When you see a little ant running around your sugar bowl in the kitchen, do you think if he says to another ant, gee, where did that person come from? Where did the sugar come from? You think he's going to have the scientific knowledge? I don't think so. So should he say, well, the sugar doesn't exist? No, I don't think so. Forgive me for my illustration, but lots of love to every one of you, and thank you for the privilege of sharing these truths.
and a truth and a fact are the same thing. You can use the words interchangeably. And when Jesus Christ said, I am the truth, he meant it because it's a fact. May the Lord bless you richly in the acknowledgement of your personal faith. Amen. Now, Simi was somebody who would have impacted all of her lives in her own way. And as we come to pay tribute to her, I commence by saying we never have to have a shadow of doubt that she is in the presence of the Lord. We are separated by time, but one day we will have a reunion in eternity. And although it may seem very strange for someone so young, so vibrant, to, to be with the Lord at this stage, it nonetheless is the basis of our rejoicing. And to, obviously, uh, Werner and Tasha and, of course, Charlene, and as mom and dad, let me tell you, your love surpasses anything known to the human earth. It's the greatest reflection on God's love because you would lay your lives down if you could swap with her even now. And that's what Christ did. He took our place on the cross because that's the love reflected in the heart, particularly of a mom and a dad, um, and of course the greater family. So as we join together, it's not that we don't um, have sorrow, but I'm so grateful for the wording of scriptures that say we sorrow. If you think you can lose a loved one and not shed tears, you're coming from another planet and it's not heaven. But if you can sorrow as a Christian, you have an undergirding hand of strength that God gives, and he says, we sorrow, yes we do, but not as those who have no promise and hope in Christ. So we will be united again um, in time to come, and until then, um, I believe if somebody could say anything, she'd say, and I think she did say something along this, these lines, is, you know, get on with life, carry on until you join me up with the last part on, because I know that's true. Um, so I think of the family members, once again, Charlene as mom, you, your, your um, love for her, Vanna, your love for her, Tasha, your love for her. And then, of course, the sister, Yolandi, and, of course, Brendan, the love that you shared, sometimes... Um, you don't always have as much time when you become adults, but the love you shared. And then, of course, Monique. Monique and the friendship, you'll see that the photos reflected that I saw. Um, we come to celebrate Simi's life because there's something very special, and that is who she is. And then, of course, I know Rickus as well, and your family. You had bonded beautifully with Simi and what the... the the, the love of families is, and we just rejoice. And then to each and every one of you, you will hold memories that differ maybe from immediate family, but I can tell you one thing, a memory is a most fascinating thing because it is in your mind, you remember what happened, you don't forget it at all, but you know what's so amazing about a memory in faith is that the day will come when we will talk in the glory of God's perfection and presence one day. And the memories from this world we will not forget because it's the, it's the reality of the grief, of the sorrow, of losing a loved one, that when we get there, we will never have that as a prospect, number one. But number two, the hardships of this world will make the glory of heaven shine that in a million years we'll go back to the throne of grace and say, thank you, Lord, for the gift of eternal life, because you died for us on the cross, were buried, and rose again, and simply trusting you gave us this perfection that we longed for while away from you. So I share that, um, and again, thank you to each and every one of you. I also want to just, right at the beginning, throw in a thanks for the utilization of the, the, the church here, the sound, the streaming, um, all of that puts together this opportunity to say glory to Sami and love her till the day that we meet again in the fullness of who she is. So having, having shared that, there's a beautiful song that's going to be played. But before we play that, I'm just going to ask you to stand as we have a word of prayer, please.
our Heavenly Father, as we approach your throne of grace this morning, we know that in your presence is the very one that we love, that we've come to thank you for, and we've come to celebrate her uniqueness, her personality, but also her characteristics of kindness, of caring, of a sense of humor, of so many things that made her unique and a one-off out of the current seven and a half billion people on this earth. We come before you. We know that for mom and dad, there are no words to even begin to describe the emotions and the sense of even unbelief at the moment of the fact that Simi is not with us in her physical life, but we know she will rule on in our lives by the memories, by who she is, and the anticipation of meeting her face to face one day again. And when we do, you will be there with her, and we will thank you for the possibility and the, the reality of closing the door on this world, although we never expected it, but entering into that glory beyond this. And therefore we pray that for, for Vanna, for, of course, Charlene as mom and dad, for Tertia, who played a role there as well, and a very important one, plus the family members, plus the extended family, plus even the friends who loved her the way that we know, and I can say personally, we know that she was lovable. We ask your blessing on this tribute as we thank you in the name of Christ. I don't know how old <laughs> Simi was when she made you your first cup of coffee. It takes quite a long time, doesn't it? <laughs> but you know what? She gave you some gifts. She made, she made us gifts. She used to she always overwhelmed us at a birthday or whatever because she was the one who went out. She would buy a glass jar with the blackboard section on it and write notes, and she really was exceptional, I promise you. Uh, we like, happy birthday, and Simi boy. <laughs> so what I'm saying, though, is that of all the things she gave you, and I think this is such a beautiful thing, do you know the greatest gift she ever, ever could have given you was what she did, and she said, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. That's the key to the reunion of all eternity. And her faith, she didn't give you her faith, but the fact that she's a believer makes this literally a celebration in a temporary separation. Not that the memories don't remain, but until we get there. Vanna, you're going to come forward and share some beautiful thoughts about Simi. And I must say, before we, while you come up, um, yeah. I don't read Afrikaans very well. I'm from Rhodesia originally. But yes, yeah, making sense of a few of your words, Werner. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Papa Werner. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And, and, and these, you may have read them, beautifully worded, I must say, to those of you who have written beautifully. And Mama Bear, too. And uh, Sprinkle Box. And... Thanks, Van. Ek wil in alle eerlijkheid beginnen. I'll check it. It should be. I control it from the back. Ek wil vandaag in alle eerlijkheid sê dat ons allemaal hier so is om Simi'se leven te vier. Sy was amazing mens en as ouwers, as familie, en as vriende, het die Heere al vir ons geleen vir 28 jaar, en ons kon mekaar sy lief en leed deel, dier dik en din, vir die van julle wat al nie geken het, sy was een borrelende, bondslo liefde, wat haar liefde uitgestort het op al haar vriende en haar familie, sonder terughoud. En ek gaan dit so verskrikkelijk mis. Maar in saying that, ek weet vandag waar sy is. Simonai het al die eenvoudige dinge in die lewe geniet. Sy was mal oor die natuur, al die prachtige dinge in die natuur. En ek dink dis wat al een besonderse fotograaf gemaakt het. Sy kon hier respandeer om te kyk na al die mooi en dit op die precieze rechte tyd kon sy dit vastlee op haar camera. Ek het die voorheg gehad om al paar keer te op te hou, as sy baie van julle sy naals gedoen het. Al geduld, al passie vir wat sy gedoen het, was amazing. 
is niet die type mens wat zij was. Mijn hart is vandaag bitterlijk zeer. Mama is zo zwart. Paul gezegd, ons, ons, ons treer niet zonder hoop nie. Ons treer omdat ons een van die Heere sy engelkies moes teruggeef vir hom vandag. En dit gaan vir ons bitter moeilik wees, maar al die ringe ringe wat sy vir my gegeet, vir ons as familie, ons sal het nooit vergeet nie. Simi was een nederige mens, al empathie vir hom jede mens, het al daar uitgestraal. En ek het nooit besef, tot en met die laaste paar weke, die invloed wat sy gehad het op soveel mense sy levens nie. As een ouwer, weet een ouw, dat jou kind, een kind van die Heere is. Maar Charlene het in die laaste week, een paar keer ook herhaal, dat ons het nooit besef, die impact wat sy gehad het uit haar klein winkelkie uit, Walker Drive uit nie. Ek wil toch dankie sê vir amal, vir amal van julle wat vir haar gebid het, dat het ons geestelik so versterk. Ek wil, ek wil graag vir julle iets lees, wat iemand op haar supportgroep hier geet, wat, wat Simonai opsom. She has fulfilled her purpose gloriously. She has run her race and kept the faith. Every day she was ministering to broken souls, just looking for comfort, giving hope to so many little women, looking for a safe place to offload and just an ear to listen that won't judge them. Simi was all of these to so many women. Doing my nails was no longer just doing nails. It was a place where I could be myself. A place where I was free of everyday concerns and a place where I found a friend, an ear and a shoulder to, to cry on. She was one remarkable young lady who touched many lives. Like a status message says, Lord, let them see you in me. <sighs> This is probably the most beautiful part of it all. And as a dad, I thank the Lord for this. I saw Jesus in her every time. I saw her peace, the love, the kindness, and the compassion. I only pray that some of it rubbed off on me over the years. And I concur with this. There's been so many messages similar to this one. And it It makes me so proud to stand here and to be able to say to all of you that she was my daughter. Sy was my meisie kind en ek was so, so trots op haar. Maar is tyd dat die Heer haar terugvat. Ek is so seker waar sy is vandag, a week en a bykie terug, toe sy rarig baie, baie syk was. Het ons gevideo call en toe sy sê vir my, Papa, ek is nie bang om dood te gaan nie. En dit het my ontstel in die stadium. En toe sê ek vir my skat, toe sê sy my papa, moet nie oor my worry nie, ek is nie bang om dood te gaan nie. Waarvoor ek wel bang is, is al hierdie operaties en dinge. Die Heere het beter geweet. Ons het om gevra om haar te red as het sy wil is. Maar sy wil was dat hy haar wou terughe. Ek dank die Heere vir jou leven my kind tot ons mekaar weer sê. Dankie. Thank you, Anna. The depth of those words, they're not just words, the, the depth of them is absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. Um, and it reflects a relationship of incredible value. Charlene, you going to come and share your love for Simi? Mama Bear. <laughs> I can't 
can't bring it like Dad. I always need a piece of paper to go by. <laughs> That's fine. So um, I'm going to read this to you. If you knew Simi, she would want the service to be a celebration of her life. With her, it was either right or wrong. You could not move her if she made up her mind, and her love for God and her beliefs and values was unquestionable. She used the photography to capture people's special moments, but in that four walls, on that small little business, is where she flourished. This platform allowed her to talk about her love for God, each one getting a hug before and after the appointment, which very upset her quite a lot during COVID. You allowed all to tell these stories, was ready to listen and serve. Van and I are moved and I'm proud to see her through the eyes of each one of you. Such an outpour of love. In the five weeks you were in hospital, you tried to spend as much time you could muster out of your fragile, sick body, talking to me, Dad, Rikas, or just looking into my eyes. Some days, five hours. I will never forget your beautiful, beautiful eyes. I could see everything you did not want to say out loud. Yes, you cried sometimes, but mostly you were brave and dignified in your struggle, so secure in your faith and your love for God. You showed us all what it truly means to be unwavering in your faith. It will never be the same, but I will make you proud. You loved your grandparents so much, three already passed away. Opa Dennis, Opa Franz, and Oma Molly. I'm so sure they are all watching over us today. Laat me nie toe om my boodskapie te lees van Oma Neta, wat vir jou so bitter kostbaar was. My prachtige Simi, Oma het so nodig gehad om jou nog so een rukkie vast te hou. Ek weet het is alsichtig van my. Ek het elke aand my arms om jou gesit en gebid. Ek weet, liewe Jesus' arms, as ook daar, om jou vast te hou. Nou moet ek los, dat jy saam met die engele in die hemel kan wees. Dit is moeilik om te laat los my blom. Mense vraag vir my, wat so soort blom was Simi? En ek, kyk, en ek sê, kyk na akker vol blomme en maak jou kese. Tot ons weer ontmoet my prachtige Simi. Mama wil net vir Riekes ook acknowledge wat so graag een lewe saam met jou wou gehad het, wat nog voor sy siek geraak het gepraat het van trouw, en wat daar was vir ons allemaal dier die tyd. Kan ek water kry, sy lief sies? Dankie dat jy lief was en is vir haar. Jolandie wat haar sus, Jolandie wat haar sus, sus so verskrikkelijk mis. Mieke, my sus wat so by my gestaan het, en Monique wat alles met Simi geleel het. Sisters nie in bloed, maar op alle ander vlakke, wat saak maak. Jou papa wat sy meisie so lief het, en wat ons allemaal, sy vrou Tersha, my, Landie, Brendan, Darnell, Riek is ten volle ondersteun het dier die laaste paar weke en ons weet hoe zwaar het hy gekry. Dankie papa daddy jou van ons allemaal. Sien is long friendships that cannot be bought and never forgotten. Jou ma is so trots en so bitter blij vir die lesse wat jy ons allemaal geleer het. Moet nooit tyd verspeel nie. Leef een mooi skoon leven en plant die saakies, love, compassion, faith and see people glow, grow. Mis jou verskrikkelijk. Mama sal mooi kyk na jou sisters. Tot ons allemaal weer, of tot ons allemaal jou weer sien en beleef, is lief vir jou, my meisie kind. Um, ek wil net graag hoe, dat um, al die nichtjes en neefjes, sissies en boetjes, net vir my gauw opstaan. Is jylle nie omgeen nie? Ek weet, sy het een flauwsband gehad met allemaal daar buiten kan kyk, die band wat sy met julle gehad het, en die tyd wat sy sal met julle gespandeer het, was 
ongelooflik kostbaar voor haar familie, was alles. So ek wil net vir julle klompie sê, vriesig dankie vir die liefde, die keierkies, jy weet, as hy dispatch toe reis, hy gaan keier daar op dispatch, dan weet ek, dis een oornacht, Rikkie weet het. En net, Brendan, jy weet, stief boeties, maar, soos ek sê, nie in bloed nie, maar in op alle ander gebiede, baie dankie vir julle, so ek wil net net vir julle geeknalend hoe dit kan. En dan wil ek net sê, Paul, you were not, you're not a pastor, Jazz, you're a friend, Jazz. You know, I am a single lady, and if anything goes wrong in my household, whether it's my plumbing or whatever, whether it's I need a sermon, Paul was to the rescue. Thank you for being such a huge, I wanted to say, um, the teachings that you gave Simone mm. is who she is today. Wonderful. And that's what molded her. Mm. And she always said to mom, it's not, I don't go to church, it's not like church. Mm. Like Paul doesn't have a church. He teaches us. It's like, a, it's like we're teaching us. It's not a sermon. We, we discuss it and we dissect it afterwards and mm. we understand Beautiful. it. Beautiful. So I just want to say thank you for the impact you had on Pleasure. her. Pleasure. Um, and for being a lifelong friend to, to the family. Mm. I really, really appreciate you spending the time and I couldn't think of anybody else that could have done it for us today. It's an honor, I promise you. All right, and then I just want to acknowledge Jason as well. Jason has been an extremely good friend to Simone for many, many years. Um, and, you know, I didn't want to sip in today without just acknowledging mm. um, the friendship that they had. Yes. And then, Rikas, thank you for being for wanting to marry my child, for wanting to, I mean, you just bought the bucky, you guys would have gone on a trip. Um, and I know it hurts, but um, I love you very, very much. And thank you that you wanted to spend your life with her. Um, she had that. And I'm forever grateful for that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Charlene. Maybe you're sitting here and you're wondering the connection with Simi to us as a family. And when I say a family, I'm talking my daughter, Janine, obviously Jason, my son. Um, and they knew each other for many years. A friendship was the basic foundation of it. Um, and I tell you what, amongst other things, Vanna and Charlene, I don't only thank you for the years of pleasure and joy it was to have Simi there. Simi, um, I think I said to you when I saw you the other day, Janine, I used to call the most huggable person. But Janine actually, uh, I got married and I still hug her. I hugged her this morning when I saw her. But Simi was also one of my huggies. <laughs> she, was, she was very precious, very special. And of course, the time that her and Jason spent together, they'd come to the Briars, and we hope to see you at the Briars. Uh, we have a Sunday Briar because we stay on a plot together. But our link with Simi was absolutely phenomenal because it spanned eight years, I think. And that's why, and I can say to you, and I'm sure you'll agree with me, uh, as mom and dad, probably more than anyone, we know where she is. But I tell you, at the drop of a hat, you almost want to pick up the phone and say, hey, Simi, it's actually hard to believe because she was such a, a, I don't want to say a bubbly person, but there was such a strong connection with everything she made. And I can honestly tell you, Janine, my daughter, loved Simi beyond what you might even know because she used to go on a monthly basis, get her nails done. And I tell you, Simi amazed me for, for two reasons. I watched her do Janine's nails one day, and boy, she took her, is it nail varnish? I don't know what it's called. <laughs> she had all these colors there, and she had little hand dry things. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, she took it with a fine point, and she drew a pair of scissors on Janine's nail. I don't know, how do you do that? I still don't know. But that connection we had. And then there's something else I must thank you for, and it really relates to Jason as well, and that is that, yes, Simi taught him to speak Afrikaans. <laughs> and she did, I'm not joking. And I'd hear to him talking to Simi on the phone. Yeah, and, and yeah, near this good, this good, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, yes, where did you come from? 
So I thank you. And you know what? As we said, it's a celebration of Simi's life. And you know what? We will think of her as a family. We will think of her as a mom and dad. You will never get to a point where you forget about Simi. But that's what love is. And that's why love is such an incredibly powerful thing. And that's what God has for us. And that's where... And I used to love my chats with Simi as well. When she used to come to the brow, we'd have a conversation about the so-called teaching. And that's where, and I'm going to say something that I believe is very real, is that many times there needs to be a grounding of why we believe. Now, I know your love for Simi because I obviously have Janine and Jason. But when Janine was born, I held her in my arms, had never considered anything spiritual and I thought, what happens if something happens to Janine, whether it's five days old, 15 days old, 50 years old? Is there more to life? And I'd never looked towards anything religious, spiritual. And then I had friends coming to me because I was then an apprentice. No, I was, I was qualified. I was a fitter and turner, and I was studying mechanical engineering. And people came to me and said, if you're searching, you need to believe in Jesus. And I'd say, oh, is it, eh? <laughs> and then I'd say to them, if you can tell me why, then I'll listen to your what. Don't say I need to believe in Jesus. Tell me why I can believe. And I'll tell you what, that formed some of the conversations with Simi as well. That, and I'm going to say something to you that I promise you, you know, and I know, and I hope most of you know, is that you could lay your life down on the fact that it's no figment of our imagination that Simi's with the Lord. It's an absolute as real as you exist here today. Now, I questioned it. I loved maths, and two plus two equals four. You can take two oranges, two oranges, put them together as four. So it has proofs, it has theorems, and that's why for me to believe and trust something, there must be the ev evidence. And let me tell you, the scriptures, people don't have a clue how God has strung them together. 66 authors put the Bible together. Not one of them contradicts the human nature needing a savior. Not one of them contradicts the perfection of God. And not one of them contradicts God's provision for us because we are imperfect. And I'll tell you what, and then he went and he did something with that. He died on the cross to take our place, so God's justice was poured out on him. He was buried. He rose again and he said, if you just trust me, there's nothing you have to do because I've done it all. And you know what? It's an amazing thing because that love is reflected in parents. And as a mom and a dad, particularly a mom, I'm sorry to say this, um, mom will hear the baby cry at 2 o'clock in the morning and she'll say, I wonder why she's restless. She just had her bottle or whatever it was. Um, the dad will say, no, she'll survive, man. She's <laughs> but the love you have, that love is such a reflection of God's love because you would carry anything you could if it meant she didn't have to carry it. And that's why that love is reflected in the gospel so beautifully because the human heart reflects it. And that's where um, someone like Simi, we've spoken about her, her nail business, her photography by the way, she came to our house and she took a photograph of sugar. Sugar? No, sugar was our cat. She took a photograph of our little kitten, had a heart problem, couldn't breathe properly, and she took some of the most beautiful photos of this little cat um, called sugar. So her photography, her nails, as I say, I hope she didn't do your nails, Jason. Men shouldn't have their nails done. <laughs> but... The reality is that we celebrate her life. And I'm just going to take a few readings, but I want to then, and I, I know I'm limited time-wise, but I've got the time. Um, and that is that on the little bookmark you've got, and I promise you this will be carried in my Bible with pride for the rest of my life unless I lose it, but I'm going to try not to. <laughs> Janice says I'm getting older and I lose my keys and everything else, so that's my wife, Janice. The words on the back of this, I promise you, the wisdom she reflects here, surpasses anyone. You can be the most successful person in the world. If you can think like this, you've gone from knowledge and information to life wisdom, godly wisdom. And I'm going to just share these thoughts. Before I do, though, I do want to, 
um, just uh, take a few beautiful readings, because the Bible uses the word hope, but it doesn't mean like we say, well, we hope we're going to win the World Cup. We hope it's not a maybe, maybe not. It's a, we haven't seen it yet, but it exists 110%. And that's why I'm just going to take some readings that reflect that, because the Bible speaks about our hope in Christ, but it means the certainty that we have not experienced, which Simi now is experiencing. And it's beautiful. Paul writes and he says, and remember Jesus Christ was on the earth, he died, he was buried, he rose again, and then the Jewish people rejected his offer to put a kingdom on earth, and then Paul became the one who writes to us the gospel of grace in a unique and special way, that is trust in Christ alone, no more, no less. It's not what you do, but it counts because of who you are. And what it says, Paul writes and he says, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. And then it goes on and it says in Romans, For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. If you've got the score of the Rugby World Cup, you're not hoping anymore, are you? But they, that's our sense of hope. But the certainty of the win is what we have in Christ. So although we, Paul uses the term in the Greek word term, hope is not what it is in English, and I, sh I share that with you because I believe these are the type of things, not necessarily this specifically, but that I'll chat to Simi with. So it's a beautiful reflection for me to just share on these verses and just share some of the things. We had wonderful conversations. Um, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for it? And then, of course, there's 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now abideth hope, sorry, now abideth faith, hope, and charity. These three, but the greatest of these is charity. Now, the King James uses the word charity, but it's actually used in most other versions as love. Today, we consider love to be an emotional thing. But this original word in the King James Bible is the most accurate. Because have you ever seen a man go and give something to charity and then ask for a payment for it. And that's why it's charity, because it is, first of all, an action driven by love, the, you, the, the acknowledgement of the value of the person, of whatever it is, and second of all, there's no return on it. It's not like you owe me now, and that's what the gospel is, and that's why it's called the gift of eternal life that Simi rejoiced and loved and shared with you. And you know what, I, I know I said this to you, but I'm gonna share it as well, and that is that when Simi spent that last time in hospital, God says, I will give you a peace that passes understanding. In other words, how can you have peace in that situation? And even to you, I can say, how can you have peace in this situation? But if I looked at it from a human point of view, you wouldn't have an undergirding peace. You're still going to have sorrow. There are going to be many tears. There are going to be many thoughts. But undergirding that is, wow, well, I can't wait till we're together again in heaven. That's where the peace comes from. And with Simi, in saying what she said to her dad, the Lord only gives a peace that passes understanding when you need it. He doesn't hand it out on a platter to anyone and everyone, but when you hit that crisis, there's an inner peace of knowing, hang on, I know who I trust in. And Simi reflected that. And let me tell you, her Christian testimony, absolutely stunning, stunning, stunning. Her faith and her assurance, despite how much she loved you and could never imagine being without you, in terms of here, yeah, it's a thing bigger than us, and then God gives us the peace. And I'll tell you what, um, Simi will live on in our lives and our memories for many, many years. Uh, um, even her love for animals. <laughs> but I, I also know in every one of your lives, there will be memories you carry. The memory is something you carry until that door opens where we enter heaven, and that memory becomes the topic of our conversation. So it's not just history-based, it's future-based as well. Um, and then, of course, what she said was this, what following Jesus really means. And I must say, when you read this to me the first time, I still, I, I, I'm blown over by it. I honestly mean that. Following Jesus is not going to make you wealthy. Ah, well said to me. I always say to people when they say, yeah, but you know, God wants to bless you financially. I say, isn't it? Why is he blessing Hollywood so much? What's Hollywood got that's so super spiritual? No, in the kingdom on earth, Prosperity was part of God's blessings to show the rest of the world, hang on, these are my people, 
And if you join them, you can also be prosperous, but it's not for our message of, of grace today. So she says, following Jesus is not going to make you wealthy or guarantee your health. Oh, I tell you what, tiny percentage of Christians understand God is not in the business of showing signs and wonders because we're not Israel who had the Old Testament where their God the Father had done all these miracles. They had to have miracles, signs and wonders. Do we? No, our faith is in the cross. That's the full work. And this is reflected, and that's why I said, when you gave it to me, I said, please, can I use it as the base of my sermon? Um, but it goes on and says, the message of the scripture and the gospel of Christ is not that, uh, sorry, the message of the scripture and the gospel of Christ is not that in following him, everything goes right. Boy, Simi, you, you had a time where you could say that, eh? But that he is enough no matter what happens. That is the message of the gospel. Not that everything is always going to be okay. And you know what? From a human perspective, boy, as a mom and a dad, it's a rocky road, boy. But as I say, undergirding it, you know there's the harbour. And that's where your strength comes from. And this, this, I don't even know how to say it. This is invaluable in celebrating her life today in her presence with the Lord. What she wrote here, beyond words of the absolute meaningfulness that that brought to her, unspeakable. Having said that, my thinking and my thoughts to you is, have you ever looked at the facts behind the faith that Simi enjoyed, that we enjoy? I'll tell you why. Because many times it's about how you feel about God. No, it's not. It's about his declared word. And his declared word for 2,000 years in his death, his resurrection, has never been able to be disproven. People say, well, how do you know that? Prove it. And I say, well, you go and unprove it, please. So what I'm saying is that the reality of the peace, the reality of the future, is totally secure by the facts and the truth of what God's word says. Once again, our thoughts are with all of you, and I take a last reading. Um, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, which is the Greek word for to have passed away, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. And then it says, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits, or the first one, of those who have died, to join him in the resurrection and the glory of heaven. So I share those thoughts. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to read um, the acknowledgements, the personal thanks and acknowledgements, you, these that you gave me, huh? Okay. Is it Sune? Not Sagnet. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, the acknowledgements have been given. Sune Gerba, Valerie Els, and Lynn Dale, who traveled from far to support us today. Thank you for that. The Sister Beats and the doctors and the oncology staff who looked after Simi and supported us throughout her journey. Sister Colette, heading oncology, who has gone beyond her call of duty in support of us, who held a special candle lit ceremony with me when she shaved Simi's hair. Oh, that must have been a biggie. That must have been a biggie. Peter David and Stephanie Douglas, longtime friends, designed the pamphlets and bookmark who founded a fundraising but had to cancel it when Simi passed away. And then all the staff at Walker Drive Nursery and, Nursery and especially Jane for the special recorded messages. Then Martinique and Megan, both these young ladies supported Simi. Megan donated her, her nail money and Martinique wanted to start a fundraiser under the nail businesses who all wanted to contribute towards Simi's loss of income. And to be practically minded like that, beautiful. Uh, Gwen, Dani, and Rickus, who stepped in and assisted us when Simi could no longer work. Nothing was too much support and financially. Thank you, Rickus, in terms of your support personally as well, which I know has been acknowledged, but um, it was wonderful. And then the Simi Progress WhatsApp support group, family and friends who is engaged and shown us as parents what Simi meant to each one of them. And then Gerrit and Kat, 
Kathleen, oh, sorry, Charlene's colleagues, the flowers in the church, beautiful. Um, and then, is it Neti? Neti. Neti. Okay, Neti. You've got to get... Jason, help me with Afrikaans here, please. <laughs> That's what we taught you. Uh, Neti. Grew up with Sami. Donated special designed wooden and marble box for Sami's ashes. Is it Jean? S-J-A-H-N? Sean. Okay, Sean. Um, wanted to do this as well, and thank you for the thoughtfulness. The cherished ladies of Charlene's Church, loving on the family uh, with meals and care. That was amazing. And then flowers from family and colleagues that have been sent. And then Andrew Kramer, funeral services, for the kindness and the professionalism and the care that you showed. And then Bukhani Printers for donating the printing of the pamphlets. Um, and they said, no parent should lose a child. And I'm in 100% agreement. But as I said to you, and I'm going to close with this on the thanks, is that when we get to heaven and God unfolds the canvas, who will be standing next to us in heaven because of Sami's untimely, as we would put it, death? But you never know how that reflects. And God will say, hang on, and I promise you, I'm, I believe this, when we see it, we'll be with the Lord and with Simi, and we'll say, okay, Lord, please, I'm glad you didn't change it, because this wouldn't have happened. And we don't know, it's not something we can even see. God doesn't send us an email and say, this is the report for what I've done through Simi's passing. Uh, but let me tell you, his love, if you loved her the way you do, and I promise you, you couldn't even describe it, it's way beyond anything you could, God loved her more, because he's got a, a love that is the source of our love. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you once again this morning as we rejoice in Simi's faith and her trust in you and her presence with you today. But as humans and as family, we know that it's, it's never easy from a human point of view, but thankfully from a truth point of view, we don't doubt for one minute the reality of her presence with you and the ability that we can continue moment by moment sometimes, day by day at sometimes, but until our journey completes here, when it does, we will enter the glory of heaven. And Lord, we just rejoice in Simi's life. We give you the honor and the tribute for the unique personality you gave her. Right at the point of conception, there was a life given. The months in the womb, the years in the world, but ultimately, your purpose was the wonder of the glory of being with you by simple faith in Christ's work. We thank you for this as we rejoice together in Simi's life. We celebrate her life, and we know that she would want that. And we ask that you carry us until the time that we are beyond this world and its many, many things that just are not good in terms of having to deal with them. But we thank you for your hand of strength support comfort in and through them. In Christ's name we pray, pray as we pay tribute to Simi. Amen. Mm -hmm.